Judy here. It's um, the 18th Monday of December and um, I am um, woke up and I just felt like I wanted to share this message. I have to go back to bed. It's like the middle of the night in Cali here. It's about, I don't know, is it 2 or 1? One, 1 or 1.30 or 2, but um, I just had a quick little thought I wanted to share with you. You know, I uh, in another video, I talked about our uh, our oneness with Christ, which is really all that matters, all that matters, especially in this season that we're living in, the intimacy, the oneness that we have with our creator, our groom, that is soon to come any day, could be today, so be ready. Um, but um, we don't, we want to, we want to abstain from things that abs uh, distract us from him. And, and so, um, one of the things, and you have to search your heart. Well, don't even go looking for it. You'll know. Christ is good. I used to introspect all the time. And one day God was just like, let, I'll, trust me. You know, I just got too much into figuring, trying to figure out what was I doing? Which it, God just, so I kind of try to keep it really simple. Um, but I was talking about how even ministering for God and doing things for him can distract us, you know. But another thing that can distract you is, is rapture watching, okay? And um, I got a little carried away. You know, I've been doing this for four years because of Christ. It's, it was, it's him that did it in me. I wouldn't have become like this had it not been his spirit. So it's a blessing. Christ um, transforms us into, you know, an overnight rapture retard right and then what do you do with that what do you do with that and so it's a walk that's new because the, we are living in the last generation so we don't have anyone that could tell us how to live this way so we're just we we go about it and and we and we learn and we share and we grow and and one of the things that can happen though is just like when you're doing ministry for Christ you know when you're waiting for the rapture you can get so caught up in the rapture wait and the rapture wait is very exciting. I mean, there are so many signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. I mean, that alone you can spend hours on. But then you have all the other events that Christ tells us to look out for before he comes. And then you can spend time researching all of that. And then you can spend time. Uh, it's just it's just a very wide topic. I mean, it's exciting if, if he's made you rapture-centric. So you can spend time watching you know, people getting their personal information from him and so much so that you lose sight of your creator. You lose sight of the intimacy and the fellowship with the very one that you're waiting for. Just like when you're working for Christ in ministry, you get so caught up in doing what you're doing for him that you lose sight of the one that you're working for. So let's just not lose sight of the one that we're waiting for. And how you know that you've done that is you just, you feel agitated in your spirit. You don't feel renewed. You don't feel refreshed. You feel overall cruddy okay we call it a rapture hangover but I mean it's it's not even that it's 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 because <clears throat> rapture hangovers are usually like you know a day a day after a date set or something <sighs> what I'm talking about is just you know that that emptiness and and I just really want to encourage people while we're here you know I have never encouraged anyone to have a horrible life I mean, it's weird. It's rapture centric. It's the bipolar ride of the bride. I mean, we're miserable because we, we don't want to be here because of what Christ has revealed to us. Okay. So I'm not going to deny that and act like you're not, but now this is where it becomes a two, you know, pronged thing where we are alive in Christ. It's no longer us that live, but it's Christ in us. So as long as you're here, you get all of the gifts of the spirit, love, peace, joy, freedom, patience, kindness, gentleness, you get God's life uh, in, infusing energy in you that creates p tremendous peace and joy and satisfaction in him and him alone. Nothing on this earth, okay, but it's in him. It's this internal relationship that gives you wealth that people don't have. And, and it's beautiful. So I really encourage you guys. I mean, I don't, I, I, I'm rapture centric as anyone, but you know, if you see me at work or in my house or, you know, and dealing with the things I have to deal with, you would never know I'm a, I'm just, 
I'm, I'm bipolar. I'm miserable until I see my Christ, until I see him. I want to be out of here so bad, but you wouldn't know it because I'm straddling two worlds. And so in this current world I'm in, I'm walking in that peace, that freedom, that joy. And I just really want to encourage you, rapture-centric bride and, and those of you waiting for Christ, you know, while we're here, you get to develop intimacy with him. And please do that. And don't let the wait, you're waiting for him in, in your wait for him. Don't lose sight of that. Don't lose sight of the very one you're waiting for. You know, intimacy with Christ is what gives you that passion for, you know, for the people that he's put in your life to love and, and the things he's caused you to do, okay? And and maybe that's just for him and him alone. Maybe you don't have anyone in your life and, and it's just for him. Well, that's huge. That's huge. That's just for him. That's huge. You know, so um, I, I'm, I'm a mom, so I have that going on and then work and then my pets and then and then you guys I love I love my YouTube family and so I spend time with you guys and um you know that's my my order of priority Christ first always and um I just want to encourage everybody let's and if you're if you're feeling agitated if you're not and I'm not talking about rapture centric bipolar stuff but I just want to tell everybody, you should be walking. And I really hate to see you not living to your fullest potential in Christ. And when I say you should be, I'm saying when you spend time with Christ, you will. It's it's just a gift that he gives his people. You will, as you have intimacy and union with him, you will walk in this measure of peace and joy and freedom. And you don't have to be some miserable person. Okay, and so that, and plus, I mean, how is that any kind of a testimony? How are you any different in the world if you're living for Christ and you're just a miserable wretch? You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying we don't go through trials. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying you're um, superhuman, but you are supernatural. And because we're supernatural, our none of our peace and freedom and joy depends on our circumstances okay so like the world gets tossed to and fro oh my you know my stocks went up oh blah 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 you know oh my husband's being mean you know my wife's a jerk my kids are misbehaving and then you just get tossed all around by all these things that we're all touched by okay but when you have that strong oneness with Christ that firm footing that stability that union there is, you can't be moved. You can't be shaken. I've had over 20 years to develop and work on this, but it, it's not a time thing. Okay. But I'm speaking from some experience. That's why I make, you know, I'm trying to help because, um, you could have just come to Christ recently. You can have all that. It's the person who spends time with him. You know, that's what you focus on. You empower in your life. You focus on Christ, you empower him. And you focus on all these other things, that, yeah, that are real and you have, and you need to address, and that's part of life. Yes, but you keep Christ at the center, and He leads you in all these things. Okay, so I could never um, enjoy my parenting job if it wasn't Christ in me, you know, and His strength and energy doing it through me. Okay, so I enjoy it. Um, and the days that I'm not having that, I, I stop and I'm like, what am I operating in? Too much of my my power because I'm feeling drained and worn out. Now you just have, and that's just, you know, normal to have some days like that. But I'm saying overall, Christ in us should make us a different type of people. When people look at us, they should be like, I want what they have, okay? We're advertisement for our king. And so I just really want to encourage you to walk in that higher realm. And I'm, it's not dependent on your circumstances. Please don't tell me it is. Please don't say, yeah, Judy, I would be like that if I could just get a job or if I could just find you know, the perfect mate or yeah, if I wasn't, you know, living out of my car. And I mean, I listen, I'm telling you right now, it is not dependent on your circumstances. And I have lived this and I'm telling you, I have had situations, you know, in, in, in the past 14 years where I did have nowhere to live. Okay. For brief periods of time where the Lord, I mean, he always had a roof over my head, but I was in between places and, you know, felt vulnerable and scary. So I'm telling you, I've been through, when I give you these messages, I've lived it. I've been through it. And I'm telling you, there is no excuse. Physical pain? Sure. I had lupus. I was racked with pain from my head to my feet. Okay. Years ago. And so, 
you can still abide in that Christ presence, that peace, that power, and still be in trial, okay? So I really want to encourage everybody that this, this journey as we wait for him is beautiful. Embrace it. Don't wake up miserable and go to bed miserable. And, and you know, how is that any kind of, how are you any different from the world? And we are different from the world. So I want to encourage you to spend time with Christ. Spend time in prayer and in union with him. Um, you can do that simply by just talking to him. That's my favorite way, just including him in everything. You can open up your Bible to do it. You can worship to do it. You can walk around with an attitude of just complete gratitude. And that's one of the things that I like to do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your goodness. I, I just thank him a lot. Um, so I, swear, I really wanted to get that out. Let's not lose sight of Christ as we wait for him. And let's not lose sight of the very one we're waiting for as we jump into the signs and get really excited. Let's keep, you know, that relationship fresh and that union and that oneness because the very one we're waiting for the one we're about to see face to face eye to eye any moment now is the one we should be facetiming right now you know and um so the transition won't be too too much different it, it won't be it'll be like oh wow this feels you know this is this is what we have. This this is when you see him face to face. The only thing that's going to be different is you actually get to look into your creator's eyes. But everything else will seem very familiar because you've already been with him, right? You're not seeing a complete stranger. You're seeing the very one that you have union with, that you have oneness with. How beautiful is that? Okay, so I love you guys. And this is the goal of my life. So when I share all this, it's like that's my goal and trust me I have a teenager you know I got I'm you know I'm <laughs> my life is all kinds of drama and all you know all kinds of stuff going on okay so I'm not speak I don't just sit here in my room and and shut my eyes and worship Jesus all day I I'm mostly out and about because my life is busy okay so and I can still have that union in all of my hectic schedule I have that union I have that oneness. I have the ability to pray for others even in all of that because of what Christ is, Christ's energy in me gives me that strength. Okay, so we can live above. We can live above, you know, listen, if you're in Christ, we should be living above what the world, you know, the world gets dragged down by all these silly things, the cares of this world, choke everything out. As believers, we have a higher standard. Okay, and I, I get all my... You know, my high, I look at my Bible and I see, wait, I'm getting ripped off. I need to be, look at all this that I have in Christ. If I'm not walking in this type of wealth and power and inner strength and beauty, well then, you know, then I'm getting ripped off, so I'm going to, all right? And I have had years in my Christian walk where I walked in complete, uh, I was pathetic, okay? But we can be powerful in Christ and we can have this powerful union that, that energizes you and gives you the ability to get outside your self, you know, and bless others and while we're still here. And, and, and even if it's just for you, just for you, just for you. And another thing you can do while we're waiting for a groom and keeping our eyes on him is, is um, uh, they asked Mother Teresa, you know, why do you keep going to India? It's such a dark, hard place to go. And trust me, I've been there. It is. I didn't ever want to go back. We stayed a month. And ministered there and it was horrible honestly I said I don't want to come back here <laughs> it was very hard to see the suffering well she said because that's where I find Jesus that's where she finds him and so you know you'll find Jesus when you're helping others when you're loving others you know um, as well but find him in union and intimacy and then he'll lead you to places where you'll find him and you'll be attracted to places where other people will be like why do you do that you know, why do you go there? Because that's where Christ is. And that's, in my life, I go to some pretty weird places that people don't understand. And that Christ draws me to because I find him there in places where, you know, Christians would say, don't do that. Don't go there. Anyway, so I love you guys. And um, I just hope that while we wait for Christ, that we don't lose sight. And oneness of the very one we're waiting for, okay?